Hi everyone, happy Tuesday night, October 27th, 2020. And thank you for joining me for Almost Live Stamping with Charlene. Tonight we are going to be making a slimline card, which is a card that would fit inside a regular business envelope. If you took an eight and a half, a, an 11 piece of paper and folded it into three sections, it would fit inside a regular business envelope. However, we're gonna make the slimline card and then there's no way I'm gonna let you put it in a regular envelope that you can just buy at an office supply store. We are going to make our own envelopes using cardstock and using designer series paper. And for the envelopes that we make using designer series paper, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own sticky back to and from address labels. It's a great project, really fun, really easy, so let's get started. A slimline card is made out of a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So you just take the eight and a half by 11 piece and cut it off at seven inches. So it measures, when it's open, it measures eight and a half by seven. And then you score it at three and a half inches and you can use it horizontally like I did on mine, or you can use it vertically. You can decorate it however you want to. So I am using a Highland Heather piece of cardstock that I've already cut, eight and a half by seven, scored it three and a half, and then I'm going to take this design from the Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper, and the first thing I'm gonna do is use some of the Snowflake Splendor ribbon. Let me tell you, this spool of ribbon goes really far. I have used it on so many projects. So, I don't know why it is on this one. It's the same length as all the other ones, but maybe it's just the, um, what it's made out of, I don't know. It just seems to have lasted me a really long time. I've usually had to replenish it by now. Okay, so, I have my tail and then I bring my other side to equal that tail and I don't know if you can really see it there with the on the light there we go maybe that's better and then I'm just going to tie my bow on the side so the making the card is the easy part it's the envelope that is the fun part of tonight's video Okay, and now I'm going to use some of my Stampin' Seal Plus, and I have to say that I'm really beginning to like this a lot. If you can see there, I've had this since June. Now, granted, I haven't used it on every project, but you don't need a lot. I use maybe like a quarter of an inch every so often, um, and it's very strong, and I've also noticed that it is repositionable. Um, if you reposition right away. So I'm gonna just put this on the front of my card and this piece measures three and a quarter by seven and three quarters. Everything is usually just one quarter of an inch shorter than the layer underneath it. Okay, so I have already stamped my little snowman from the Snowman Season stamp set. And I have already used my stitched shape circle to cut out my circle. If you um, would like the tutorial on how I did this, you can look at my previous video where I make the spinner card and I go into detail on how I colored in the little snowman and cut out the circles. I will link that video below. Um, but because I want to spend tonight, um, I want to spend the time tonight making the actual envelope, I am just going to send you back over to that other video where um, the tutorial for how to make this part of the card is already done for you. So I will use my stamp and seal plus again to adhere this on there. And then, whoops. I used my Stampin' Dimensionals to attach the little snowman. He is so cute. 
to the card. And I need, it, I need to make sure that I give him the bling he deserves. So I am going to use two of the blue adhesive back gems for his buttons. So there's our snowman. And also to save time, because we wanna concentrate on the envelope, uh, I've already pre-cut and pre-stamped the Merry Christmas sentiment. This is also from the Snowman Season stamp set. So let's go ahead and adhere this. The tutorial for this part is also on last week's video where I made the spinner card using the same supplies. So we will also attach this with Stampin' Dimensionals. And then we'll just put that right there. So you see how easy slimline cards are just, they're so easy. And now what I'm gonna do is to finish it off is I'm just gonna give it a little bit more bling and I am going to put three more of the blue adhesive back gems right down there under the Merry Christmas. So that is all there is to making the card. And now we will move on and make the envelopes. And I'm gonna make one, I'm gonna show you how to make one out of regular cardstock and out of designer series paper. I'm going to use my Simply Scored tool to do all of the scoring, but I wanted to show you uh, that I used the little snowflake stamps from the snowman season stamp set and then I used the from and the two. This might seem silly, but make sure that you don't reverse it and put the two up here and the from down there. So let's start off with a piece of balmy blue cardstock. I am going to use my simply scored tool to show you how we create the envelope and the first thing you want to do is with the eight and a half by 11 part going this way, the eight and a half part going this way, the 11 part going this way. The first thing you want to do is score this at two and a half inches all the way down to the bottom and then come over here to six and a half and score it all the way down to the bottom and just wait until you see how easy this is. Now flip the paper around so that you have your 11 inch side going across the top and then you wanna score it at one and a half inches and then come down here and score it at 10 and a half inches. And now we can set aside our Simply Scored tool. And before we do any of the cutting, go ahead and take your bone folder and fold all of the pieces that you just scored. So let's fold in the sides. And yes, one side is going to be shorter than the other side, and it's supposed to be that way. And then let's fold it down this way. And folding it first is going to be especially important when you come to the designer series paper part because then you'll be, um, it's easier for you to see what you are actually cutting. Uh, okay, so now what we're gonna do is go down here and if you see um, on my little template I made you, I put on here cut out, cut out, cut out, cut out. So we are gonna cut out this tiny little piece that goes up to that 10 and a half inch score line. And you can just put this piece in your scraps if you want to. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. And then we're gonna come up here 
And we are going to cut out this piece. And this piece here. Then we'll do the final piece over here. So, now we have this. Let's turn it this way so you can see it better. So now if you have a corner rounder, I have my old one from way back, my early Stampin' Up! days, I still have this one. Go ahead and on this large flap here, you can go ahead and round your corners and it'll make it look, it, make it look nice and finished. And now I want you to go and grab a ruler and a pencil and we will move on to the next step. Okay, this next part is tedious, but that's okay because it's the little tedious parts that make the project look completely professional. So you wanna take your ruler. I apologize for the glare. I just, I don't know how to not have the glare. Come over here to the very outer edge and I want you to go down an eighth of an inch and make a pencil mark there. And then what I want you to do is turn this around and take your ruler, line it up here where that little pencil tick mark is and then line the top of the ruler up with this little edge that's right there, the corner where the top meets this side. And you are going to make a pencil line like that. So let me hold that up closely. So you see, here's my tick mark at an eighth of an inch. And then I just drew my line up there. Now this is the inside of the envelope. So if it's a little funky, it's okay. Um, you know, if some pencil mark stays there, it'll be okay because nobody's gonna see it. Unless they deconstruct your envelope because they wanna copy it. In that case, if they do want to copy it, I would just go ahead and say, hey, you can just go to Stampin' with Charlene on YouTube, subscribe to her channel, and she'll show you how to do it. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. If you only knew what goes on behind the scenes here and the bloopers that I have to delete. Ay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'm making my little tick mark at an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to go right from here. See where I, that this little corner and draw that pencil mark down to the tick mark. And then let's turn it over. And now we have this bottom piece here and we are going to put our ruler here. So here is the score and here is the cut edge. So along the cut edge, we want to make a tick mark at the cut edge at an eighth of an inch. And then we want to do the same thing where we go from the little corner here to our tick mark like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to, it's at four inches, so I'm just gonna come in to three and three eighths and make my little tick mark. That doesn't look like it's, I think it's over a little bit more. The eyes are going. And then I will draw my line from where I cut it to the tick mark. Okay, so now on this side, I have these two lines and then flip it around. And over here, not on the flap, but on the sides, I have the same thing. So now this is when having um, your paper snips really come in handy. Having a pair of really sharp paper snips comes in handy because what we're gonna do is we are going to cut from that tick mark up to that part. And so now we've 
cut this on an angle. So when we fold it in, it's just gonna look really professional because these it's not gonna be straight across like that. It's going to come down a little bit and just give it a professional flare. So let's come over here and do this again on this side. And then we will do the same thing on the bottom. Just snip off those little ends like that. So for your adhesive, I highly suggest that you use tear and tape adhesive. And on the inside, you wanna put your tear and tape adhesive down here across the bottom. And then you need to put it across um, I like to just put it across the shorter of the two sides. It doesn't matter, but I don't know. Let's just keep it consistent and we will put it across the short side and then we will put some along here across the top. And now to assemble the envelope, just remove the tear and tape adhesive from the, the long piece of tear and tape adhesive. Fold in this side and then, like, you know, how easy is this, right? And then fold it down like that. And then you'll look up here and you see how you have your little, perfectly little cut slits to make it look really professional. And then we'll come down here to the bottom and remove this piece of tear and tape adhesive, fold this up, and you probably, because you're using cardstock, which is a lot thicker, just take your bone folder and just go along your edges and fold them in nicely, like that. So then on my sample, we'll just move on to this one. I stamped the snowflakes here and the from and the to. And even though um, on my sample here, I used the white ribbon from the Flowers for Every Season ribbon pack, and this is pretty thick. But I want to show you that it does fit inside this envelope without a problem. So even though it's thick, it still fits inside the envelope. And then you just go ahead and take the tear and tape adhesive uh, top part off of there and seal your envelope and it's ready to go. Now, can you put this in the regular mail? I don't see why you couldn't. Um, I, I, I would just take it to the counter and see if it requires extra postage. I'm not sure if it does. So to be safe, that's what I would do. Uh, but it's just so cute. Even if you just delivered it to your neighbors like this or put it on top of a gift package, um, it's just so cute. So now let's move on to making the same envelope with a piece of designer series paper with its own little sticky labels. Very, very fun. I'm using this rather neutral piece of designer series paper for the video tutorial on how to make the envelope. Uh, because I think you'll be able to see the lines and the cutting a lot better than if I were to use a busy pattern like the back side. So the measurements are all the same, but you do want to take your 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper and make sure that you cut it down to eight and a half by 11. So we will put the eight and a half side along the top of our Simply Score tool. If you don't have the Simply Score tool, you can also use the scoring blade that's on your paper trimmer. So we'll come over here and we will do our first score line at two and a half inches. So this is a great review. <clears throat> and we'll do our other score line at six and a half inches. I have some background things I need to tell you guys about too while we're doing this. Then flip your paper the other way. Number one is uh, my husband watches me when I do these and he says that I use the word, isn't that so fun, that I say the word, isn't that fun, or I say that phrase too much, that I need to think of another word besides fun. But what other word is there to use? Because it's fun, isn't it? 
I, it's, if you can think of another word, leave it in the comments, but I don't know. Okay, so then we're gonna come over here. We flip the paper around to the eight and a half by 11, um, and we're gonna score it down at one and a half, and then come down here and score at 10 and a half. The other funny thing is if you can hear my voice cracking, and if you remember in the video a couple of weeks, no, it wasn't in the video a couple of weeks ago. It was in the video that I made for the card classes in the mail for the month of October. There's a part in there where I completely lose my voice. Like I stop talking and the words just don't come out. Anyway, I actually ended up going to the doctor for it and being diagnosed with reflux. But if you hear my voice crack, that's why that's happening. Um, okay, so now remember, after we've scored it, we wanna go ahead and fold with our bone folder. And you'll see that this part really helps out when you're doing it on the designer series paper. Because you will be able to see where it is that you actually have to make your cut marks. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, let's just flip it over so we can see better. We'll come down here to this little part, cut this out. And this pattern from the Snowflake Splendor designer series paper is perfect for envelopes uh, because it's not too busy. But since we are going to be making our own mailing labels, woohoo, wait till that part comes up. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter how busy it is. Okay, so we did both of the bottom ones. Then we're gonna come up here to the top and do both of the top pieces. Save these if you would like for scraps. And yes, I do have to say, there have been times where I just wished that I had this size of a piece of paper because I was doing a project and I was like, oh man, if only I just had one more tiny, tiny piece. Um, so I do try to save all of my scraps. Okay, so now we have the top cut out, we have the bottom cut out, so the next is our corner rounder at the top. And then let's turn it over and you'll just see after you've made several how quickly the tedious part um, becomes. Go down an eighth of an inch and make your tick mark Go from the tick mark to the cutout point. Do it on the other edge. You know, you just get a flow going and then you can just make a bunch of these. So you can get 12 out of a pack of designer series paper. Um, or you can get 24 out of a pack of our um, regular cardstock. And then I will come down here and do the same thing along the bottom. Make my little tick mark at an eighth of an inch and over here at an eighth of an inch. Draw my lines. And also, if you get a chance in the comments, leave me some of your ideas of what you would like to see Coming up for November's card class in the mail. I do have an idea, but I would like to also hear from you guys of what, um, if there's a stamp set that you really like or a card fold that you really wanna try, leave me some ideas, some suggestions. I would really appreciate that. So let's cut out those parts and then for review, we're gonna put our tear and tape adhesive along the piece on the bottom. Um, the shorter of the two sides, just because we wanna stay consistent. We'll go ahead and fold this in.
fold up the bottom. And then we will put another piece of adhesive up here. And let's get the card that we made tonight. And look at how cute, it fits right in even with the ribbon. So now we are going to move on and make the stickers, the label stickers, the to and the from label stickers. To make the label stickers, I use the stitched nested labels dies and I just wanna show you which ones I used. So if you have your dies nested like this, I used this one which would be probably the one, two, three, fourth largest, and then the fifth largest. So this would be one, two, three, fourth largest, fifth largest. I guess I could say smallest, but these are the two that I used. But this also fits on the envelope. So you can just play around with them but I highly suggest using the stitch nested labels because they just look so good. And then I use just regular Whisper White cardstock. So I took a piece of Whisper White cardstock and this measures, let me see, I think it's four and a half. It's four by four and a half. That fits both of these dies on it, okay? And then I took a piece of the, um, I took a sheet of the adhesive sheets. If you don't have these, get them. Remember we used these on the snow globe project that we made, which was the card class in the mail for October. So I took an adhesive sheet and I also cut it the same size, so it's four inches by four and a half inches. And then I removed one of the sticky sides and I placed it on my cardstock. It's very sticky. Um, and let me just show you, there, there are, um, there are lines in it there's perforations in it to make it easier for the back to come off. So when you're doing something like this, make sure that when you cut it and place your dies on there, um, you, you cut it so that you can easily peel off the back. So I was just able, like I was just able to do on here. So because it had that line there, I can easily just peel it off and then place it on my Whisper White cardstock. Okay, now remember to flip it over and place your dies on the cardstock, not on the sticky part, okay? So place your dies on the cardstock and then run it through your die cut machine. After you run it through the die cut machine, remember with the dies on the cardstock side of the paper, you then have your two sticky labels. So you can take the to and from stamp and remember the from goes on the smaller one because I had to keep reminding myself not to do it backwards. So I'm just going to stamp the from and you will notice that I only put the ink, oh, I only put the ink on the from, not on the to. So I will stamp my from on the smaller label. And then I'm just gonna quickly clean that off. And now I'm gonna take my larger label and I will stamp the two. But just as a little trick, put a piece of scrap paper down in case there's any extra ink that gets on your stamp. So it, it'll get onto the scrap paper and not onto your label. So there I'm, okay, see how I didn't even realize that the ink had gotten on the from? So because it was on scrap paper, it didn't get on the label. 
So now we can go ahead and just take these, peel off the back of our homemade stickers that we just made. How fun is this? You can do it with any die cut you have, make stickers. And we will put our from label up here. And we'll just ignore the fact that I just smeared some ink on there. And we will put our to label on or in the middle. And that is how you make your own envelope for the slimline card. So we have one made out of designer series paper and we have one made out of cardstock. Slimline cards are the new trendy card to make and making fun envelopes that coordinate with designer series paper makes it that much better. Leave me a comment if you can think of another word besides fun to explain all of the projects that we make, because I can't think of one. And let's just adopt that word. Almost Live Stampin' with Charlene is fun. Everything we make is fun. Everything we're gonna make is fun. We're all gonna have fun being here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you had fun making the slimline card and the coordinating envelope. Please don't buy one at an office supply store. Make your own. It's so much more fun. And I will see you guys next week.